Hi guys, I'm doing this tutorial to kind of uh, showcase a dominant strategy for the cat right now. As you know, in the current meta game, the cat has been having a pretty tough time, you know, with uh, all the newer players picking on them at the moment, and especially with the problem where you know the turn one vagabond base rush just hasn't been, you know, a fun uh, faction to play. I'm releasing this video, the idea isn't to say, hey, here's a dominant strategy, it's gonna be the best strategy out there for you to climb ladder or slaughter your opponents, no. If you want to do that, just play, you know, play Vagabond at Woodland Alliance, right? So this video is more about showcasing what is possible out there and maybe, you know, give some more hopes to more fun um, playing the cat and potentially maybe uh, this could become a better strategy than the regular you know point point rush strategy right so to start off the strategy you always want a uh, very standard one only was one start at the mouse clearing top right put the uh, sawmill and put the recruit there because you want to keep having some of the forces uh, at your base to just keep it protected to deter you know um, other players from you know thinking about just rushing it um, usually with cat you put the crafting at the uh, rabbit location but for this strategy you only put one crafting at one fox location at the start simply because one simple card called armorer and that is a very important card to the success of your victory Okay, so you start off the base of the game uh, contrary to you know um, regular playstyle. You you do move you move your all your cats back. Uh, what the reason why we're doing this allows two things. The first thing is um, if not in this particular game, but if the uh, eerie is a battle oriented eerie uh, with a starting carding battle slot you're greatly increasing the chance of this guy going turmoil and this strategy is based very heavily on uh, you know uh, eerie not having a great game even though actually this game the eerie had a really good game this game but you know um, but in most of cases if you want to ensure uh, your victory eerie shouldn't be having a good game so moving the cat back would be very good um, and the other thing why we want to move the cat back is to deter the woodland alliance from putting tokens uh, in your uh, clearings um, there's another way to do it uh, is to kind of for this mouse clearing in the center instead of you know moving two back to uh, instead of you know moving two to the to the um, to the mouse uh, at the bottom move the one from the rabbit to the mouse in the center so that's what you want to do that's another way to do is really deter the uh, to the woodland alliance but i'm playing this in the sense that i'm almost i'm almost hoping that he is going to put a mouse here so that i'm gonna attack it next round because i have my win uh, the, the sawmill at my mouse uh clearing uh, at the uh, at the base, so I don't. I can always use that card for my overwork, so I don't need to give this unnecessarily to Wooden Alliance. So even if you put a token there, I just battle it out, kind of let them know that hey, you know what, this cat is doesn't like your tokens. You know, go somewhere else. You know, if the Eerie doesn't tell him that, I'm telling him that. So you know, give or take, um, either way works, right? Um, me, this game is is uh, is just you know I leave two there, but he didn't put put a token there anyway, so you know. All right, so for your uh, rest of the game, what you want to be doing is just s stay on to um, a sawmill. Don't go over that, right? Uh, you don't need uh, that many uh, sawmills. So you only need 10 points by the time you want to claim 
the dominance card for the diagonal dominance card, right? That's that's just two sawmills enough. You have some work overwork here and there. And the other thing you don't want to put too much sawmill is you don't want to leave too many wood lying around unused because uh, you won't be building past 10, uh, 10 points with this strategy, right? You don't want to leave too many wood lying around so that later on uh, your opponent can pick up free point. Because the moment you claim the dominance victory, there's two things they can do. Uh, stop you from claim uh, from getting dominance or win the game this themselves by leaving a lot of wood on the board uh, allows the opens two possibility up for them right that's something you don't want to do so two sawmills keep that board control uh, territory control going the current state you're seeing right now that's the state you want on the board having a territorial control with three cat on all the uh, call it you know the center vertical line the clearings that you know that cross the center vertical line have three cat there and uh, yeah because the bird isn't you know going to give you too much trouble because he's like wow I'm I already have so much places to build so many places to build I'm not going to uh, be too aggressive on the cat and they, he's probably scratching his head right like what the cat what, what is this cat doing right anyways so he's just kind of playing his own game. And another really good thing about this strategy is that your point won't be leading at all. You are actually going to be the one that's have the lowest point throughout the whole game. Even by almost two turns before the game end, you're only sitting on 10 points. So that deters newer players from randomly attacking you. They, they don't, most of them won't get a read on you. And that's actually a really good thing. Okay, so as you can see right here, this, you know, uh, Woodland Alliance having a little bit of trouble trying to get his starting tokens. It's actually not a bad idea to keep in control like that um, because his maximum uh, uh, support size is 5. So, uh, with, if he's unlucky with his uh, supporters, uh, supporter draws, um, yeah, he might have a really slow start. As you can see here, I'm just pumping out as many recruit as possible. Again, keep in mind, territorial control, territorial control. Um, try to always squeeze in a recruit every game. Uh, yeah. As you can see, I, I like the state of the board right now, so I don't think I'm gonna do anything for my last move am I wait oh okay fine I just keep both of these um, places protected that's you know just to play really safe uh, this is actually really good I want to right now as you can see I drew the dominance card that I needed but to be honest with you um, you don't have to really bank on yourself drawing this card of course uh, yourself drawing is the perfect scenario but in most cases, you know, people are gonna discard this card. Nobody else really likes it. Pay some close attention when the Eerie puts this card in uh, his decree. But other than that, as game progresses, I would say 80% of the chance this card will be available to claim. All you really need to do is, you know, keep a bird card in your hand to swap it and there's some synergy here right because you're building out your recruit really fast you get a lot of card draw so the chance of you drawing the dominance card or the chance of you drawing a bird card that you can swap with the dominance is relatively high so there's definitely some synergy going on here um, another card that you might want to craft if you feel like the uh, if the enemy has a Tinker or the Woodland Alliance have a really good start uh, is this card I just drew, right? Um, the single mouse crafting card. It's got lower priority than the Fox card, the, the armor, but it's worth crafting sometime in the game. If you feel like you need it, just look at their hand, play around it. I mean, generally, you're not too 
uh, worried about the uh, 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 failure card because really if you see that card in their hand start moving all your cat to let's say let's say they have fox favor right start moving all your all your uh, cat into your mouse clearing even if they drop it you're not gonna have too many casualties right so that's that's the way to do it so another card to craft to keep that in mind um, is is the I forgot the name of this card. What is the name of this card? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the mouse the mouse look at the other person hand card. Let's just call it that for now. Okay. A couple things about this is you really want to keep track about the state of the game really kind of do some calculations right hey if my cat is dying you know should i say should i spend a car to you know fill the hospital with or it's not worth it so because i'm just going to recruit them out so the idea here is if you can evenly um, recruit all your cat at that same round that you claim the dominance, that's the perfect scenario. But just think about what other people would do, right? As you can see right here, the Woodland Alliance is uh, putting a lot of tokens. He got some re uh, really lucky token uh, uh, supporter draws and, and decided to put a whole bunch of stuff into my base. My response to that isn't just to attack him because I don't really don't want to give him a lot of the cards in my hand. And I'm going to have casualties if, uh, uh, not, I, I mean, I'm going to be wasting a lot of, you know, resources because attacking on both of these points is two, two turns, uh, two actions, right? If I just move them out, that's one action only, right? They can revolt uh, at any of these two locations. Right now, I think I check his supporter. He has like two supporter, so the chance of him revolting isn't that high. Uh, there's a, you know especially at that rabbit clearing, which is going to be a problem for me, right? So I just decided, hey, I'm just gonna leave it open for you. Go ahead and revolt, I don't, I don't really care, right? But for some reason, luckily, I think this is also due to the fact that I'm actually uh, not leading in point. I think this Vagabond decided that uh, the Woodland Lions is his biggest problem so he went uh, sympathy token hunting for me that actually helped me out which is great but if he didn't do that and uh, that wouldn't have been too much of a problem for me anyways um, you know taking out a sawmill or hopefully you know taking out a recruit I'm gonna build it eventually, right? And it kind of helps me to get to that 10 point anyways. Doesn't hurt. But anyways, this is really good for me. So right now I say, wow, you know, I'm in a pretty good position right now. I have the dominance card in hand. I only have seven cats left to get out. So now you're really gonna start thinking, hey, what is my end game play, right? What are the things that can prevent me from this victory? Really think the bigger picture here. And also keep a really close check on the Eerie. This probably isn't the best example of a game that you want to have this strategy because the Yuri has been just having such a great game but you want what you really care about is not how many roost the Yuri puts out is more of how many um, warriors the Yuri summons the lesser the better of course right um, I think at this point the Woodland Alliance, the chance of him winning the game is extremely low, right? So I'm hoping that the Vagabond is going to start picking on this Yuri 
and even better cause some uh, turmoil. But I don't think that was the case in this game. But in generally, I think people would think like that because by this time they still wouldn't know what the heck they're doing, right? The uh, they wouldn't allow us put a token there that potentially he can revolt at. So it's either I spend a move to move those cat back to my main base, or just leave a card in hand for field hospital. I think with what I have right now, is I think I decided just to leave uh, leave the uh, save an extra action and just take the risk. Because here's the thing, right now, if you look at the situation, I need extra uh, action anyways to move that... Um... Did I end up moving the cat back? I don't think I did. I was kind of uh, debating between... debating if I should do it or not. Yeah, I decided to move all the cat there, so next round it kind of saves me uh, extra move and take the uh, and then there's a chance that he's not gonna revolt there if he doesn't revolt there that means my decision paid off uh, way better than me just going to assume he's gonna revolt there and then you know waste an extra move because I have to get those cats uh, at the bottom uh, consolidate them at the fuck feeling anyway so I'd rather just do that Yep. At this point, uh, you know, you want to really take some time to think about how many cat you want to distribute um, amongst, you know, your base and the rabbit clearing at the bottom left. I think the rule of thumb is. Um, Whichever base you have an ambush on, whichever clearing you have an ambush on, you you want to put uh, less uh, soldiers there. It's almost like kind of say, "Hey, come here, get me," but they didn't know that it's a trap, right? There's no point of using these cards at this point because I need those to um, secure my dominance. Just let him have the point. It's not a big deal. He can have as many points as he wants. And the best thing about this is because you don't have any um, warriors, so they don't really have the chance to uh, on this clearing. So they don't have a chance to kill a warrior. Let's say with a crossbow. Uh, and uh, farm two point instead of one point on all your pieces. So they're really just, you just only farm like what, three points there? It could have been six, right? If I had a warrior there. So that's another reason not to leave, you know, warriors hanging around these empty points. Just leave it fully open, let them attack it. It's not that many points for them anyways. Even if uh, the Eerie decide to attack it, for the uh, Vulture, he only gets one extra point per battle. He doesn't get one extra point per piece, right? So not a, not too big of a deal. But don't leave uh, wood lying around. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, too many extra points for them. I think at this point, <laughs> look at these players. They're still not too sure what's going on right now with this cat, right? 10 point cat this late into the game. What's going on, right? I'm starting, as you can see, I'm moving my mouse around over the place. I'm starting to think about hey, how many moves do I need? One thing that's uh, pretty, um, I would say pretty annoying is that uh, in your last move, you have uh, a kind of like a token, a sympathy token on your way. So if you, you know, walk across it, 
you have to uh, you have to kind of you know give him a card right so always keep a card of the same suit in your hand that matches your ambush card so let's say you have to give them a card you can give them the you can give them the the other card not the ambush card right because you need it really badly all right so claim this dominance right away because you're not doing battling anyways right might as well just do it nothing's gonna change the turn is yours so right now is the biggest the biggest the biggest uh, uh, problem you need to answer yourself and hopefully you already have an answered by now from thinking in the previous turn is how many cat do you distribute right and one good thing is if you start to consolidate your cat way ahead of time it doesn't take you that many moves to and you know to to do a perfect distribution because if your cat at this point is still all over the place all around the map then you know you're not gonna have enough move to put everything together right i decided to do this uh because the reason why i did this is uh, there's a pretty good chance that the bird is going to attack my bottom left base or not even attack it move everything in there right but the thing is because he built a, a built move, move everything in there do some attack he might he might he might take it over right there's a high chance he might take it over but uh, it's not the end of the game if he does that because if a, if if the Eevee try to do that right that's one of his choices right he have the other choices to farm point i didn't really give him too many points to farm look at the map so he have to kind of start thinking, okay, where do I go? Do I battle bottom left or do I battle top right? If he battle bottom right, it's not end of the world because I can still revive all the cat next round and then move them in again. And most likely an awkward play like that is going to force the Eerie into a turmoil next round and he won't be able to get back his bird uh, as fast as you get back your cat. So. I'm okay with him attacking the bottom left, but I'm also okay with him attacking the top right, simply because I have an ambush card, right? And I can again get all the guys out from the field hospital the same reason. So the idea here is kind of say, hey, what is the worst that can happen? Uh, distribute your risk amongst the two clearings and uh, hopefully your enemy doesn't pull too much um, you know shenanigans on you right especially right now like he's got he doesn't have the owl so if he ha here's the thing if he had an owl he might have turmoiled so he wouldn't have that much uh, uh, presence and that much actions anyways but you know owl could be one of your problems because it just does that extra damage but again, as I mentioned, right, if he has, nobody start with the owl. So if he had an owl, he must have turmoil at some point. He wouldn't have, have that, that much actions. So yeah, either way, I think he should be fine. Um, as you can see, he wasn't too unlucky on his rolls. I had an ambush card. I had an armor. So in the end, I think it all worked out. And yeah, keep check on the favor card as well. So, you know, as I mentioned, look at other people's hand if you need to craft that uh, mouse card. But sometimes you don't need to look at their hand. You can just kind of tell by their play style, right? Especially, I only need to worry about Woodland Alliance, not even because there's no tinkering in this game. I don't need to craft that card. I can simply guess that there's no way they're gonna pull a favor card and here it is a quick swift victory hope you enjoy it and also my twitch tv link is in the description